Canadian whiskey. Canadian whiskey is a type of whiskey produced in Canada. Most Canadian whiskies are blended multi-grain liquors containing a large percentage of corn spirits, and are typically lighter and smoother than other whiskey styles. When Canadian distillers began adding small amounts of highly flavorful rye grain to their mashes, people began demanding this new rye-flavored whiskey, referring to it simply as rye. Today, as for the past two centuries, the terms rye whiskey and Canadian whiskey are used interchangeably in Canada and, as defined in Canadian law, refer to exactly the same product, which generally is made with only a small amount of rye grain. Historically, in Canada, whiskey that had some rye grain added to the mash bill to give it more flavor came to be called rye. The regulations under Canada's Food and Drugs Act stipulate the minimum conditions that must be met in order to label a product as Canadian whiskey or Canadian rye whiskey, or rye whiskey. These are also upheld internationally through geographical indication agreements. These regulations state that whiskey must be mashed, distilled and aged in Canada, be aged in small wood for not less than three years, contain not less than 40% alcohol by volume and may contain caramel and flavoring. Within these parameters Canadian whiskies can vary considerably, especially with the allowance of flavoring, though the additional requirement that they possess the aroma taste and character general I attributed to Canadian whiskey can act as a limiting factor. Canadian whiskies are most typically blends of single-grain whiskies, principally corn and rye, but also sometimes wheat, barley or triticale, all from the same distillery, though mash bills of multiple grains are sometimes used. The availability of inexpensive of American corn, with its higher proportion of usable starches relative to other cereal grains, has led it to be most typically used to create base whiskies to which flavoring whiskies are blended and dot exceptions to this include the Highwood Distillery which specializes in using wheat and the Alberta Distillers which developed its own proprietary yeast strain hat specializes in distilling rye. The flavoring whiskies are most typically rye whiskies, blended into the product to add most of its flavor and aroma. While Canadian whiskey may be labeled as a rye whiskey this blending technique only necessitates a small percentage, such as 10%, of rye to create the flavor, whereas much more rye is required if it were added to a mash bill alongside the more readily distilled corn. The base whiskies are distilled to 180 to 190 proof which results in few congener byproducts, such as fusel alcohol, aldehydes, esters, etc., and creates a lighter taste. By comparison, an American whiskey distilled any higher than 160 proof is labeled as light whiskey. The flavoring whiskies are distilled to a lower proof so that they retain more of the grain's flavor. The relative lightness created by the use of base whiskies makes Canadian whiskey useful for mixing into cocktails and highballs. The minimum three-year aging in small wood barrels applies to all whiskies used in thief blend. The higher proof base whiskies more readily absorb flavor from the barrels. As the regulations do not limit the specific type of wood that must be used, a variety of flavors can be achieved by blending whiskies aged in different types of barrels. In addition to new wood barrels, charred or uncharred, flavor can be added by aging whiskies in previously used bourbon or fortified wine barrels for different periods of time. In Canada and under British rule, grist mills distilled surplus grains to avoid spoilage. Distilling methods and technologies were brought to Canada by American and European immigrants with experience in distilling wheat and rye. This early whiskey from improvised stills, often with the grains closest to spoilage, was produced with various, uncontrolled proofs and was consumed, unaged, by the local market. While most distilling capacity was taken up producing rum, a result of Atlantic Canada's position in the British sugar trade, the first commercial-scale production of whiskey in Canada began in 1801 when John Molson purchased a copper pot still, previously used to produce rum, in Montreal. With his son Thomas Molson, and eventually partner James Morton, the Molsons operated a distillery in Montreal and Kingston and were the first in Canada to export whiskey, benefiting from Napoleonic Wars disruption in supplying French wine and brandies to England. Goodrum and Wirtz began producing whiskey in 1837 in Toronto as a side business to their wheat milling but surpassed Molson's production by the 1850s as it expanded their operations with a new distillery in what would become the distillery district. Henry Corby started distilling whiskey as a side business from his grist mill in 1859 in what became known as Corbyville and Joseph Seagram began working in his father-in-law's Waterloo flour mill and distillery in 1864, which he would eventually purchase in 1883.
Meanwhile, Americans Hiram Walker and J.P. Weiser moved to Canada, Walker to Windsor in 1858 to open a flour mill and distillery and Weiser to Prescott in 1857 to work at his uncle's distillery where he introduced a rye whiskey and was successful enough to buy the distillery five years later. The disruption of American Civil War created an export opportunity for Canadian-made whiskies and their quality, particularly those from Walker and Weiser who had already begun the practice of aging their whiskies, sustained that market even after post-war tariffs were introduced. In the 1880s, Canada's national policy placed high tariffs on foreign alcoholic products This whiskey began to be sold in bottles and the federal government instituted a bottled and bond program that provided certification of the time of whiskey spendaging and allowed deferral of taxes for that period, which encouraged aging. In 1890 Canada became the first country to enact an aging law for whiskies, requiring them to be aged at least two years. The growing temperance movement culminated in prohibition in 1916 and distilleries had to either specialize in the export market or switch to alternative products, like industrial alcohols which were in demand in support of the war effort. With the deferred revenue and storage costs of the aging law acting as a barrier to new entrants in the reduced market due to prohibition, consolidation of Canadian whiskey had begun. Henry Corby Jr. modernized and expanded upon his father's distillery and sold it. In 1905, to businessman Mortimer Davis who also purchased the Weiser Distillery, in 1918, from the heirs of J.P. Weiser. Davis's salesman Harry Hatch spent time promoting the Corby and Weiser brands and developing a distribution network in the United States which held together as Canadian Prohibition ended and American Prohibition began. After Hatch's falling out with Davis, Hatch purchased the struggling Gooderum and Wirtz in 1923 and switched out Davis's whiskey for his. Hatch was successful enough to be able to also purchase the Walker Distillery, and the popular Canadian club brand, from Hiram's grandsons in 1926. While American prohibition created risk and instability in the Canadian whiskey industry, some benefited from purchasing unused American distillation equipment on from sales to exporters, nominally to foreign countries like St. Pierre and Miquelon though actually to bootleggers to the United States. Along with Hatch, the Bronfman family was able to profit from making whiskey destined for United States during Prohibition, though mostly in Western Canada and were able to open a distillery in La Salle, Quebec and merge their company, in 1928, with Seagram's which had struggled with transitioning to the Prohibition marketplace. Samuel Bronfman became president of the company and, with his dominant personality, began a strategy of increasing their capacity and ashing whiskies in anticipation of the end of Prohibition. When that did occur, in 1933, Seagram's was in a position to quickly expand, they purchased the British Columbia Distilling Company from the Refill family in 1935, as well as several American distilleries and introduced new brands, one of them being Crown Royal, in 1939, which would eventually become one of the best-selling Canadian whiskies. While some capacity was switched to producing industrial alcohols in support of the country's World War II efforts, the industry expanded again after the war until the 1980s. In 1945, Shenley Industries purchased one of those industrial alcohol distilleries in Valleyfield, Quebec, and repurposed several defunct American whiskey brands, like Golden Wedding, Old Fine Copper, and starting in 1972, Gibson's Finest. Seeking to secure their supply of Canadian whiskey, Barton Brands also built a new distillery in Collingwood, Ontario, in 1967, where they would produce Canadian mist, though they sold the distillery in Brandonley four years later to Brown Foreman. As proximity to the shipping routes, by rail and boat, to the U.S. became less important, large distilleries were established in Alberta and Manitoba. Five years after starting to experiment with whiskies in their Toronto gin distillery, W and A Gilby Limited. created the Black Velvet Blend in 1951, which was so successful a new distillery in Lethbridge, Alberta was constructed in 1973 to produce it. Also in the West, a Calgary-based business group recruited the refills from British Columbia to oversee their Alberta distillers' operations in 1948. The company became an innovator in the practice of bulk shipping whiskies to the United States for bottling and the success of their Windsor Canadian brand produced in Alberta but bottled in the United States led National Distillers Limited to purchase Alberta distillers, in 1964, to secure their supply chain. More Alberta investors founded the Highwood Distillery in 1974 in High River, Alberta, which specialized in wheat-based whiskies. Seagram's opened a large, new plant in Gimli, Manitoba, in 1969, which would eventually replace their Waterloo and Los Al distilleries. In British Columbia, 
Ernie Potter who had been producing fruit liqueurs from alcohols distilled at Alberta Distillers built his own whiskey distillery in Langley in 1958 and produced the Potters and Century brands of whiskey. Hiram Walkers built the Okanagan Distillery in Winfield, British Columbia, in 1970 with the intention of producing Canadian Club but was redirected to fulfill contracts to produce whiskies for Suntory before being closed in 1995. After decades of expansion, a shift in consumer preferences towards white spirits, such as vodka, in the American market resulted in an excess supply of Canadian whiskies. While this allowed the whiskies to be aged longer, the unexpected storage costs and deferred revenue strained individual companies. With the distillers seeking investors and multinational corporations seeking value brands, a series of acquisitions and mergers occurred. Alberta Distillers was bought in 1987 by Fortune Brands, which would go on to become part of Beam Suntory. Hiram Walker was sold in 1987 to Allied Lions, which Berno Ricard took over in 2006, with Fortune Brands acquiring the Canadian Club brand. Grand Metropolitan had purchased Black Velvet in 1972 but sold the brand to Constellation Brands in 1999. Shenley was acquired in 1990 by United Distillers which would go on to become part of Biagio, though Gibson's Finest was sold to William Grant & Sons in 2001. Seagram's was sold in 2000 to Vivendi, which in turn sold its various brands and distillery Estoperno Ricard and Biagio. Highwood would purchase Potters in 2006. Despite the consolidation, the Kittling Ridge Distillery in Grimsby, Ontario, began to produce the Forty Creek brand, though it was sold to the Campari Group in 2014. Later, the Saws Rock Company would purchase the brand Seagram's Bow, Canadian 83 and 5 Star from Diageo in 2018. Canadian whiskey featured prominently in rum running into the U.S. during Prohibition. Hiram Walker's Distillery in Windsor, Ontario, directly across the Detroit River from Detroit, Michigan, easily served bootleggers using small, fast smuggling boats. Alberta Distillers, established in 1946 in Calgary, Alberta, the distillery was purchased in 1987 by Fortune Brands which became Beam Suntory in 2011. The distillery uses a specific strain of yeast which they developed that specializes in fermenting rye. While the distillery exports much of its whiskey for bottling in other countries, they also produce the brands Alberta Premium, Alberta Springs, Windsor Canadian, and Tangle Ridge. Black Velvet Distillery, formerly the Palliser Distillery, established in 1973 in Lethbridge, Alberta it has been owned by Constellation Brands since 1999. They produce the Black Velvet brand which is mostly shipped in bulk for bottling in Carson, California, and Owensboro, Kentucky, with some bottled on site for the Canadian market. The distillery also produces Danfield's and Shenley's Golden Wedding and OFC. Canadian Mist Distillery, established in 1967 in Collingwood, Ontario, the distillery is owned by Brown Foreman and primarily produces the Canadian Mist brand for export, in bulk at barrel strength, to the company's bottling plant in Louisville, Kentucky. Since 2011, the Collingwood brand has been produced at the distillery with the added step of holding the blended whiskey product in vats for a year with toasted maple staves. Gimli Distillery, established in 1968 in Gimli, Manitoba, to produce Seagram brands, the distillery was acquired by Diageo in 2001. The Gimli Distillery is responsible for producing Crown Royal, the best selling Canadian whiskey in the world, with 7 million cases shipped in 2017. With assistance from the Valleyfield Distillery, they also produced Seagram's Vaux and Canadian 83. Highwood Distillery, formerly the Sunnyvale Distillery, established in 1974 in High River, Alberta. The Highwood Distillery specializes in using wheat in their base whiskies. This distillery also produces vodka, rum, gin and liqueurs. Brands of Canadian whiskey produced at the Highwood Distillery include Centennial, Century, 90, and Potters. They also produce White Owl Whiskey which is Canadian whiskey that is charcoal filtered to remove the coloring impacted by aging in wood barrels. Hiram Walker Distillery, established in 1858 in Windsor, Ontario but modernized and expanded upon several times since, the distillery is owned by Pernod Ricard and operated by Corby Spirit and Wine, of which Pernod has a controlling share. Brands produced at the Walker Distillery include Lot 40, Pike Creek, Goodrum, and Wirtz, Hiram Walker's Special Old, Corby's Royal Reserve, and J.P. Weiser's brands. Most of its capacity is used for contract production off the Beam Suntory brand, and former Hiram Walker brand, Canadian Club,
in addition to generic Canadian whiskey that is exported in bulk and bottled under various labels in other countries. Kittling Ridge Distillery, established in 1992 with an associated winery in Grimsby, Ontario. Its first whiskies came to market in 2002. The distillery was purchased in 2014 by Campari Group. The distillery produces the Forty Creek brand. Old Montreal Distillery, established in 1929 as a Corby distillery, it was acquired by Sazrock Company in 2011 and modernized in 2018. It produces Sazrock brands and has taken over bottling of Caribou Crossing. Valleyfield Distillery, formerly the Shenley Distillery. Established in 1945 in a former brewery in Salaberry de Valleyfield, Quebec, near Montreal, the distillery has been owned by Diageo in 2008. Seagram's Bow is bottled here with flavoring whiskey from the Gimli Distillery. Otherwise, the Valleyfield Distillery specializes in producing base whiskies distilled from corn for other Diageo products. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.